Hello, Hello. everybody. Hello. Uh, this evening, Adriana is going to explain about inulin. You can see here. Inulin is one of our favorite ingredients because it's a healthier ingredient that gives us dry extract on the recipes. She's going to explain everything. Is uh, is she is really strong in 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 inulin in a, in a, a lot of things also. She's going to explain everything. Uh, I have to follow my training with a Chinese group, and all of them are here. Uh, <laughs> 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 okay, see you later. Thank you very much for your time. Bye bye. <laughs> Okay, so hello again. As Jersey said, we will, um, we will have like a questions and answer session about inulin because as you might know, last week we published a blog post about, um, about inulin and many of you have sent us your questions. So we tried to, instead of uh, responding on our Instagram, we gathered all the questions and we're going to try to, uh, to reply to all of them at once. Uh, so for those of, uh, of you who have joined us but maybe haven't had time to read our post, let me start with some basics about inulin. Uh, inulin is a natural ingredient uh, that is commonly found in some of the food we are eating. It's found in uh, onions, garlic, leeks, uh, chicory, uh, even wheat and uh, bananas. So this is, not a, this is not a synthetic uh, chemical ingredient. It's a natural ingredient already present in our diet. Uh, and because it's a fiber, it's very beneficial for our health. And um, depending on the country, there, has been, there have been studies uh, trying, to, uh, trying to estimate how much inulin do we consume daily or uh, with our food. And some countries apparently consume more, some less, and this, this might depend on the diet. Like uh, countries um, following Mediterranean diet usually consume more inulin uh, in their foods because they eat more onions or garlic or, um, or other products containing inulin. And um, so this is to, to, to explain, to start with, explain, with the explanation that why are we interested in inulin or why are we using inulin? Uh, it's because it's a natural product. So even if we end up with the inulin powder, uh, it comes from, from natural ingredients. The inulin that we use in Europe is mostly coming from chicory roots. Um, it can be, uh, sorry, I forgot. <laughs> I will connect myself as well to see your questions if there will be any questions uh, coming dur during this live. And um, so I'll have my phone here, okay. Uh, so. Uh, as I said, in Europe, we usually use inulin coming from the chicory roots, but in the, there are other possibilities like blue agave plant, that is the inulin um, available in South America, for example. Uh, and now there are researchers are working also on other types of inulin coming from other vegetables, for example. So um, the, the type that we are using and the type that is most commonly used in Europe is the chicory root inulin. And um, basically the production of inulin uh, is very similar to the production of sugar from beetroots. So first, uh, first the, the chicory roots are washed. Um, sliced, the inulin, the inulin or chicory root juice is produced and from that juice, from the concentration of the chicory root juice that we, we, we sometimes call inulin juice, um, the, through the method of spray drying, okay, the inulin powder is obtained. So uh, this is the product that is called native inulin and it's just a direct, uh, it's a powder extracted, um, extracted from the chicory root. And if we want to look at inulin from a, from a chemical <laughs> a point of view, if we want to look at inulin composition, okay, uh, it's useful to know that inulin is basically a molecule of glucose linked to many molecules of fructose. Okay, I hope you can see that well. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so, okay, and so on. And uh, inulin is, um, are those chains of, of fructose molecules linked to one molecule of glucose. And they can be as there can be as many as from 2 to 60 molecules of fructose linked to one molecule of, of glucose. And then many of those chains together, they, are, uh, they make the, the inulin molecule. So uh, 
if we if we look if we take a look at um, at the chemical composition of inulin, the longer the chains, uh, the less sweet they are. Why? Because long um, uh, long chain sugars like polysaccharides, like like all the fibers, are less sweet than, for example, saccharose, which is just sucrose, which is just one molecule of glucose linked with one molecule of fructose. Okay, this is the this is sucrose, so basically table table sugar. And if we have sixty molecules of fructose, um, this polysaccharide will be much less sweet than uh, than sucrose. So one important um, reason why we're using inulin is because it's less sweet than sugar, but it has other very interesting functional properties. Just like sugar, it can it can be a texturizing agent. It can bring us some sweetness, but not too much. Uh, and also it has a great water catching capacity, much greater than sugar. So this is one of the main reasons why we are using inulin in pastry. Um, so this is, this is uh, the short introduction to the subject of inulin. And now I will take a look at the questions that you have sent us and try to, to answer most of them. And if there are any questions uh, during this live, I'll, I'll be trying also to, to take a look at and see if we can, uh, if we can answer them. So um, many of you ask about the availability of inulin in your countries. Um, it's a little hard for us to say 100% that inulin is available in your country, but from what we have seen, Jordi has worked with inulin in China, in Singapore, in, uh, in France, um, in, in the United States. So we have seen that actually inulin is available uh, as a product, as an ingredient in all of these countries. Uh, sometimes you need to uh, you need to do a little bit of research because maybe your sugar supplier does not supply inulin. So often you need to, uh, maybe you need to ask for other suppliers. Um, sometimes also inulin might be sold as chicory root fiber. So a good, a good option is to, uh, is to look not only for inulin powder, but also for chicory root fiber. Uh, so this, this, about, this is the answer to the question, is inulin available in, in my country? Uh, we, cannot, we cannot reply for, uh, for each and every country, but uh, we are pretty positive that right now, um, during the last at least two years, it has become really uh, so popular and has gotten a lot of attention being a prebiotic. I will talk about it in a, in a minute. So um, I'm almost positive that you can uh, with more or less difficulty, but you can find it and purchase it wherever wherever you live. Um, the next question would be about the sweetness. So uh, someone asked, uh, what is the sweetness level compared with sugar? Okay, this is a very good and important question. So inulin uh, that we are using, because there are different types of, of inulin and we will also comment on that. Uh, inulin that we are using is the mix, is the native inulin. So it's a mix of short, medium and very long chains of, of inulin um, and as such it has the sweetness that is we call it 0 0.1 points of sweetness or it can be compared to 10 percent of sweetness of relative sweetness if compared to sugar okay this is just like we were uh, this depends on the scale you are using so we can express it if sugar we consider it as one uh, point of sweetness it has 0 0.1 point of sweetness. And if we consider sugar as 100%, uh, then we, uh, we express the relative sweetness of inulin uh, as 10%. That's why the full, um, full sugar replacement with inulin is sometimes complicated uh, because it doesn't give us enough sweetness and we don't want to use 10 times more of dry extract in a recipe. So we don't want to use 10 times more uh, of inulin in order to have the same level of sweetness. Uh, for this reason, we usually use inulin when we want to reduce the sugar quantity in the recipe. For example, working with a purees or fruits that are already sweet or having sweetness coming from also from, from another ingredient. Uh, then we can use inulin 
or sometimes if we don't have enough sweetness we will mix inulin use inulin and sugar uh, and sugar in different proportions so this is because uh, inulin that we are using that is uh, called inulin in cold uh, um, it's the the least uh, the less um, um, it's a product that is significantly less sweet than than sugar so w during the while we replace it uh, while we replace it in a recipe that contains sugar we should never think of replacing it like in a one to one ratio because then the the sweetness will drop significantly uh, an interesting option for people who want to do a 50 percent or even 100% sugar replacement and use the sugar free label on their products is using a byproduct of inulin which is called oligofructose. Oligofructose is the uh, is obtained from inulin and uh, through hydrolysis so cutting with water the molecules are basically cut in a way that we have three fructose molecules and then some molecules attached to the glucose that way the sweetness of of the obtained product is much higher because of the three fructose molecules uh, being present and uh, oligofructose which is also available in powder and syrup form has the sweetness relative sweetness of 0 0.4 um, or 40 even up to 50 percent of sweetness of sugar and we have tried uh, cake recipes where we replace the whole amount of sugar for oligofructose uh, powder or syrup and we achieve the um, we achieved to replace sugar fully that with having less sweetness but but still having the 50 percent of, of sweetness replaced um, I see one recipe, how much is the sweetness of inulin as compared to sugar? Okay, and to what extent can we add to a recipe and any effects on the texture and shelf life of the product? Yes, the effect of, this is a very good question, um, the effect on the texture is quite, um, is quite important because of the water catching capacity of inulin. So, um, so actually we use inulin in many of the mousse recipes uh, in the meringue part of the recipe, which uh, allows us to have um, to have a meringue and to have a mousse that is stable during the if we if our product will undergo freeze and thaw process, because usually what happens if we, uh, for example, if we just use sugar, uh, and if we don't use any stabilizer in the recipe, is that after freezing your mousse, when you defreeze it, you have water leaking. Uh, leaking from your mousse so it's because of the free water within the recipe that was not uh, that was not captured by sugar because there would have to be a large quantity of sugar present in order to capture all the water um, so this is one reason how um, this is one example of how inulin can help us be build stable textures in in pastry um, as far as other textural um, questions are concerned someone asked if inulin affects the uh, color the baking um, the baking color well inulin undergoes Maillard reaction just like sugar does so we end up if we make a um, sponge cake or if we make cookies with inulin we have we will also get the the brown baked color uh, which is usually desired uh, desirable in in baking products um, as far as the shelf life is concerned, of course, inulin decreases water activity through the water catching capacity. Uh, it can decrease the water catching capacity, uh, the, it, it, the water activity within a product. And there was another question asking if we could use it to reduce water activity in a ganache uh, recipe for bonbons. Yes, of course. And do, do, uh, doing that, we will be able to extend the shelf life of the of the product because we limit the free water that is available for the microorganisms to grow. So uh, yes, it does influence the texture and the, the shelf life of the product by limiting um, the water activity and catching free water. Uh, okay, then we had some questions um, regarding the dosage of inulin and this is a very important question so we also wanted to address that um, basically and it's also one reason why we wouldn't usually uh, put 
10 times the amount of inulin when we, when we replace sugar for inulin. Um, the reason we don't do it is that inulin as well as oligofructose are, um, are fibers. They are polysaccharides and fibers, but they are also, um, also called fructo-oligosaccharides. Uh, and as such, they travel through our digestive, uh, digestive tract and they uh, ferment in the lower intestine. And because of this, uh, they can, uh, if consumed in excess, they can cause some um, digestive problems. Usually it's like, uh, it can be bloating, gas, in extreme, in, in extreme can cases, maybe diarrhea, but um, this is normal for, for high fiber consumption. And um, it also happens with, with polios, by the way, and in, in it's, more frequent, I, I think. Uh, so there are, because inulin is a fiber, there are no official limits. It's considered as a generally regarded as safe product by the, um, the American uh, FDA, uh, FDI. And in Europe, it's also considered as, as a product that is safe for consumption. However, th different studies give different um, dosage that they recommend as, um, um, for daily consumption. Sometimes it's 20 grams, sometimes it's, it's, it can be higher, like 30 grams or 50 grams of inulin per day. So um, it also, it's also important to mention that people have a very different sensitivity to, uh, to fructose in general, and then to fermenting, um, fermenting sugar, sugar alcohols, and to fiber. Uh, so one person, especially people with leaky gut syndrome or people with uh, irritable uh, bowel syndrome, they can experience like uh, undesirable um, <laughs> gastrointestinal effects after consuming inulin. And some other people can, uh, can consume inulin in, uh, uh, in large quantities. Um, but it's important to, to consider that if the whole entremet is made with recipes with, with inulin that we would still try to calculate in a way that one serving of this cake, cake would not exceed 20 grams of inulin. Uh, so this, this is about the dosage. About the applications, um, we use inulin throughout all of our recipes in uh, jellies, compotes, uh, sponge cakes, uh, meringues, mousses. Uh, there's practically no recipe that we um, that we haven't tried inulin in cookies, uh, anything bread. Uh, so uh, someone asked about bread. Mm, yes, inulin can be used in bakery and pastry applications. Uh, however, there have been um, we use it in the sweet bread preparations uh, because well, in the normal bread recipe, you usually use salt rather than sugar. There's very little sugar in the um, in the bread recipe. So for this reason, inulin is not so interesting to, to replace the, the It's more used as a fiber enrichment uh, in bread making. However, we have come across some, some articles mentioning that maybe it's not so, it's not so effective in, um, in bread recipes. For more information, you can, you can check a website that is, um, that is uh, giving a lot of information about ingredients for bakery specifically, that is called bakerpedia.com. And you can look for ingredients, inulin, and, and you'll find some information on that. Uh, but as far as pastry applications are concerned, we, uh, we recommend and we have tried it in, in all preparations. Mm. Okay, I don't see any more questions here, so I will go with the, with the list that I have. Uh, there were some questions about alternative um, sweeteners, okay, other than inulin, so we can also address, uh, address this. Uh, we were asked about erythritol and we have published on our stories our answers about erythritol. We also got um, interesting feedback from you. So thank you very much for telling us how do you use it and um, what is it working for you. Uh, we were, this time we were asked about xylitol and uh, whether it's possible to make, uh, to replace um, sugar entirely and make an entremet entirely made with xylitol. So here we would say the same what we recommend for inulin. Yes, of course it's possible. 
Uh, however, for the sugar alcohols, it's important to know that because also they do not, uh, they are not digested by our body and they travel through the, uh, through the digestive tract um, and in this only to ferment in the small intestine. Um, so actually they can, as overconsumption of sugar alcohols can result in, in uh, gastrointestinal problems. That's why we should be, um, be aware of that and carefully calculate if the whole serving of, of a cake does not exceed the, the recommended uh, dosage, which can be different for different um, polyols, different sugar alcohols. We mentioned the dosage for inulin. Um, and for the sugar alcohols, basically you would need to consult um, the recommendations one by one because um, there is polydextrose that has a very high, um, uh, it's not even recommended dosage, but like a very high um, dose that is considered safe. It can be 50 grams or even as much as 90 grams per day. And there are other sugar alcohols like maltitol or erythritol that might have a much lower, um, much lower dosage uh, recommended. So basically, uh, we would um, for diabetes or for sugar replacement, we consider sugar alcohols interesting, but we prefer to work with inulin because of the fact um, that that we focus on the on what can be healthier in in the in our pastries and what can we bring into instead of what can we take away from from our preparations so when we are using uh, sugar alcohols the benefit is basically the low glycemic index and no calorie or or little uh, calories however we are not really usually they're not prebiotics and they're not um, they're not so beneficial for our body. We also came across the information that, especially zero calories, um, zero calories polyols, so this would be the case for uh, erythritol, are, um, might be bad for us because our, our body, our brain, does not recognize them as the source of energy. So it's very easy to overeat on those zero, uh, zero calories sugar, whether they are sugar substitutes or, or sugar alcohols. Uh, for this reason, we prefer inulin, which has half the calories of sugar. So still the brain gets the, uh, gets the information that it has, um, it has received some, some energy in the form of carbohydrates. Another reason is that inulin is a prebiotic for um, a quick explanation about prebiotics and probiotics. Prebiotic is, um, is basically an ingredient that is not digested by our body and that is available um, for the good bacteria in our gut to, to use during the, the fermentation. So the good bacteria basically feed on, on this ingredient, right? And th in that way, they can multiply and they can, we can have a better, um, a better microbiota. So eating prebiotics will not give us, it's not the same as eating probiotics like kefir or fermented foods, which are actually foods that already contain the microorganisms, the good bacteria. Eating prebiotics is giving food to those good bacteria already present in our, in our colon. So um, inulin and, um, and fiber is, is an example of, uh, of a food that, that can have this prebiotic, uh, prebiotic effect. And this is one more reason why we're, why we're interested in using it in pastry. Mm. Another question was about solubility of inulin, and it was a very interesting question regarding uh, two types of inulin, inulin in hot and inulin in cold. Um, so let me clear, uh, clear that for, for people who come across these two names first time. Inulin in hot is basically the longest chains of inulin, so going up till 60 molecules of fructose, okay, separated and, and clustered together. So it's very, very long chains of, of inulin. And as I, uh, as I told you, with the, lo the longer the chain, um, the less sweetness it has, but also the less solubility it has. So if we work with inulin in hot, the long, especially selected long chains of inulin, uh, it, practically, it practically has zero sweetness and uh, it's just fiber. 
so it can be useful uh, as a texturizing agent and it's often very often used to make actually food gels it's more often used to replace fat than sugar because it doesn't have uh, any perceivable sweetness and because it can it can mimic the creamy fat sensation um, and but because it's the long um, chains of uh, of inulin it is not as soluble it's difficult to uh, to dissolve it in water and if we compare it with the uh, the mix of short medium and long chains of inulin that we are using that are gathered under the name inulin in cold uh, this is the the product that we are mostly using in our recipes then the solubility is is very different uh, i will give you an example inulin in cold um, at 30 degrees okay we can dissolve 20 percent of um, 20 percent of inulin in cold in in 80 percent of water okay with no problem and at the same temperature 30 degrees we dissolve zero percent or or maybe 0 0.2 percent of inulin in hot so that's that's maybe where the uh, sometimes confusion uh, about the name comes from it's not that inulin in cold cannot be used uh, in hot preparations or it's not that inulin in hot cannot be used in cold but the solubility differs greatly and that's um, that's the difference between one and the, the other product so usually inulin in hot is used at high temperatures above 70 um, degrees and it's very often used to make food gels. If you heat it up to 72 degrees, then lower the temperature until five degrees and keep it in a fridge for like six hours, you will, you will have a food gel and, and with a creamy texture. So it is something very, very different than using uh, inulin as a, as a sugar replacement or as dry extract. And this is what we do in our recipes. So someone was asking about the meringue uh, made the, the French way, so without heating the without making the syrup and without heating the sugar and if it's possible to make it with inulin in hot uh, yes it might work but it will be substantially more difficult because the sugar you will need a lot of mechanical <laughs> action right to to dissolve to to hydrate and dissolve the the molecules of of inulin inulin in hot so it's much easier to make the french meringue with the uh, with inulin in cold. Mm, let me check if there is anything else. One more question was about polydextrose and whether we're using polydextrose because it's considered uh, a little similar to inulin. It's also a, a polysaccharide. It's a, um, it's, it's a prebiotic, but uh, because it's synthetic, so it's not produced, it's not, it's not coming from the natural source, it's, it's produced by, by joining, by bonding many, many molecules of dextrose together. Um, we are not so much interested uh, in it, uh, although we consider that it might be, it might be, interested, it, it might be interesting for, for people um, with diabetes and, and for, for people who want to use it in, uh, in pastry. However, uh, from from the information that we have found, it has practically zero sweetness. So it would be more similar to inulin in uh, in hot, and would be not so useful if we wish to replace sugar in our recipes or if we wish to cut down. Uh, maybe it's it's useful if we wish to cut down the sugar amount, and only replace part of sugar with with the dry extract with with polydextrose. But um, I guess for us it it doesn't. Um, it doesn't fulfill this need to uh, to give a little bit of sweetness but um, and from from a natural source so for for now we have never we haven't been yet using polydextrose uh, but if you if you use it and if you want to tell us in what applications and how uh, we would be very happy to hear your feedback i don't know if there are any other questions um i'm looking if I didn't, oh, okay. One one more question that maybe uh, might be uh, might be useful to to answer. Uh, what is the um, what is the minimum dry extract amount while using inulin? 
uh, well, the minimum dry extract amount will depend on your preparation. It will be very different if you're making if you're making a jelly. It will be very different if you're making a sponge cake. So so we cannot give you like the the guideline of minimum dry extract, but we can give you a guideline for. Um, for the dry extract or inulin, uh, inulin amount if you are preparing a meringue. So when we are making a mousse, uh, within our mousse recipe, we usually have 20% of the, the recipe will be a meringue. And within those 20% of meringue, we will have 33% of inulin and 67% of uh, egg yolks okay so this is the uh, this is the meringue uh, percentage uh, that we use uh, in our mousses uh, I hope that answer uh, that answers your question uh, about the dry dry extract minimum uh, yes okay which brand of inulin you use okay uh, we use inulin in cold mostly of Sosa so you can you can look for for that um it sosa also distributes inulin in hot but we we haven't been using it that much in our recipes we for the better solubility and for for the sweetness part we prefer inulin in the cold hmm? uh, okay i'm gonna just go over my list one more time to see if i didn't miss any question but I hope, uh, I hope not. And okay, one last, one last question. How would one make inulin if possible at home? I'm afraid that would, <laughs> that would require quite a laboratory and a lot of, um, a lot of machines, a lot of drying. You, it's like imagining that how much time you would have to dry the beetroot juice in a, uh, in your oven or in a, uh, in a fruit dryer, right? Fruit or, or vegetable dryer in order to, to be left with the, the crystal powders and how much of this you would, of, of the juice you would need just to end up with, with one spoon of, of powder. So I'm afraid it's not really rentable to, mm, to produce inulin at home. Ah, yes. Uh, how to solve uh, inulin in meringue properly? How to this? Okay, okay. I um, Mata was uh, telling me that there are more questions about uh, about inulin, so I will just. Oh, they disappeared. Oh, I'm so sorry. Uh, something. Uh, it was about dissolving inulin. How to properly dissolve inulin in a meringue? I I saw one question um, about that. So um, what we are doing when we are making when we are making a meringue, we start with uh, in the KitchenAid uh, by putting the, the egg whites and we let them uh, let them whisk about uh, three minutes. Then we add the inulin and whisk uh, seven more minutes. So usually our meringue will take about ten minutes to uh, until it's fully whisked. And uh, this is the time that actually that inulin needs to be properly like hydrated and dissolved. Like um, if you notice, maybe a meringue made with sugar might be ready after five minutes. This is because sugar chemical action. Sometimes it can also be beneficial to heat a little bit the meringue to heat it to to like thirty degrees. And in some biscuits, if we prepare, um, we have biscuits that are made a little bit like the genoise where where we can even heat the the eggs right where we heat the eggs not egg whites but the whole eggs with with inulin to higher uh, temperatures so first of all like taking the time to to, to beat your meringue right and also uh, sometimes temperature can can help uh, how to know if uh, Okay, how to know if the brand, okay, is inulin in cold or inulin in hot? Very good question. Uh, basically, you can look at the composition, okay, every uh, on the nutritional fact sheet or the composition uh, on, the, on the product because um, when it says 99% of the product is fiber, then it, will be, uh, then it will be inulin in hot. Okay, with no sweetness. And when it says 90% is fiber and like 10% are sugars, 
then it's uh, it's the inulin um, in cold then it's the second type of inulin uh, is the okay okay we have one last question and then we will have to we will have to wrap up for today i hope it was <laughs> interesting enough for you and, and easy to understand. Uh, what is the setting agent used in mousse apart from gelatin? Okay, <laughs> this is not about inulin, but we can answer it uh, anyway when we can use a lot of setting agents, right? You, we can use pectin, we can use gelatin, um, we can use we can use other other hydrocolloids. Okay, I'm sure in the um, in the future, we might. Uh, we already had one, one live about pectins, explaining a lot about pectins. I think it was our first live or the first live I, uh, I joined Jordi on. So maybe, um, maybe you can still find it somewhere about about using different pectins as a gelling agent. Okay. So thank you very much. Oh, one last one. Um, Okay, so if, you, if I didn't answer uh, all your doubts and all your questions, please don't worry, we will still take a look at them uh, or, and on the messages that you are sending us and we will try to resolve them all in, a, uh, in another blog post. So I hope you learned something about inulin and thank you very much for joining us today. Bye bye.